When we talk about gastrointestinal problems, we all are unaware how serious these problems can be. Some problems can be life threatening, can cause depression, anxiety, intestinal problems. Today we have with us Dr. Deep Goyal, Senior Director and HOD Surgical Gastroenterology. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. Thank you, Rashi. And uh, so before I start, there's a study in 2021 by Indian Digestive by ITC Ashurvad Atta that 56% of the people are suffering from intestinal diseases and I, you know, according to me or anyone, it might have increased, the statics might increase. So what do you think about this? What are your ideas and thoughts about the same? So Rashi, uh, it's a very, very important topic and I must thank you for covering this topic for the population. Uh, gastrointestinal diseases uh, is a very, very common problem as you very rightly said and different people perceive it in different ways. A simple formation of gas can trouble people and they can say that gas is mm -hmm. And so many other problems can be perceived as gas. Yes. So it is a very very common problem and there is no one factor for it. It is a multifactorial which I am sure we will discuss mm -hmm. during our discussion. But to answer your question, uh, this percentage of 50% or 60% uh, is difficult to assess mm -hmm. because uh, but what I can say it's a very very common problem and almost everybody at some stage of their life will, will be suffering from these kind of problems. So when we talk about gastrointestinal problems, as people always say it's called gas, eat it, 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 so is say they all go away or zyada kuch hai nahi this is indigestion do din din agar oily nahi khaoge to theek ho jayega but as to say this is a very you know very uh, important topic to talk that no people actually suffer from this very very seriously and then end up having at a stage where it's not treatable then you have to go through surgeries maybe so what are your thoughts about this how seriously this should be taken by the people so again it's a very difficult question to answer i would say if you are having a particular kind of problem, whether it is a gas, whether it is a pain, whether it is loose stools, whether it is constipation, then I think it should be addressed. Mm -hmm. If it is happening one off, that you have eaten food outside, you have gas, you have loosies, you have been fine in one or two days, then you can obviously mm -hmm. uh, you know, ignore it for time being. Mm -hmm. But if it is happening repeatedly and it is causing trouble, it is altering your lifestyle or it is causing stress to your mind, then obviously we need to look at it and we need to see a specialist to see what is happening. So when we talk about gastrointestinal, how do you exactly uh, you know, define it as a, in a layman terms? Right. So any trouble which you are having below the chest okay. and you know above the pelvis is you know it's basically gastro problem. Okay. When we say gastro problem, there are different organs starting from food pipe, okay. starting from stomach, pancreas, liver, mm -hmm. small intestine, large intestine, rectum, okay. anal canal. So these are some of the organs which you know may, will be involved when we talk about gastrointestinal diseases. So as you treat a lot of people, what what is the most common problem you have pointed out in people in which part of the body? Yeah. So it is called indigestion which normally people perceive you know. Yeah. Any problem in the stomach or abdomen they perceive as an indigestion yeah. or gas bandha hi You know these are the yeah. two commonest complaints. Yeah. Yeah. It also gas bandhi hai, pet pulta hai, yeah. digestion thik nahi hai. Yeah. So these are the commonest words with which people come to us. Yeah. So we need to now identify whether it is a usual gas problem yeah. or this is a gas problem because of any organic problem. Yeah. So we obviously need to conduct some tests. We need to first take the history of the patient. We need to examine the patient physically, keep a hand, feel the belly, and then do some basic tests like ultrasound. So ultrasound for a gastrointestinal surgeon is like a stethoscope. Oh yeah. Right. So for a physician, you know, you have to listen to the heartbeat, listen yes. to the lung sounds. Yes. Similarly, ultrasound tells us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And if a basic ultrasound is normal, it gives us a lot of relief as a gastrointestinal surgeon okay. that you know mota mota thik lag raha hai. but if there is any specific problem which you need to evaluate huh. then obviously you might ask patient to undergo next generation mm -hmm. tests okay. like endoscopies okay so we'll talk about that but before that uh, what is the alarming state see so let's suppose i have eaten somewhere out and mujhe aaj gas ho gaye chalo okay normally but then some people, so I know some people in my uh, family, they cannot uh, have tea 
If they have tea, they can't sleep at night. It's a uh, what do you call this? Khatte daka rana, dhang se so nee pana, burning sensations, bloating ho jati hai. So that is also a part of I think the same thing. Absolutely. So, uh, how so what you're referring to, uh, you know, the problem can be of twofold. One is that you have a hyper acidity. Okay. Hyper acidity can be because of ulcers, okay. or hyper acidity can cause ulcers. Okay. Then you know that will lead to all this. What you're saying. Hmm. Then you can have a gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's okay. called GERD or GERD yeah. in our language. What happens is when you eat, when the food pipe meets the stomach, mm -hmm. there is a valve there mm -hmm. which does not allow the acid of the stomach to come up. Okay. It's a one-way street. Okay. So what you eat goes down, nothing comes back. Mm -hmm. But when this valve is not functioning for whatever reason, your acid and the food comes back into the food pipe. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about is a khatti dakare. Yeah. That is what happens. Okay. We need to see whether we can treat this problem with the medicines. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it can be treated by medicines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to do more tests to know what is the reason, and sometimes you may require a laparoscopic surgery to correct reflux disease. Okay. So, just like um, I have this problem that if I eat oily, I have the problem when I eat oily, I can't digest, so I avoid eating oily. So basically, <coughs> once in a while, also if I eat oily, it happens. Uh, I can't digest it properly. Either I'll end up vomiting out, or either it will be like a in digestion whole night. I have to end up eating or throwing up right. so that I can sleep well. So what are the alarming, uh, you know, symptoms of the people who need to seek a doctor so that they don't go through surgeries and they can, you know, so, avoid all these. You know, some of the common things which a person can do to avoid. Uh, surgical intervention is if person is obese this problem is likely to happen okay. more often than not mm -hmm. so you need to lose weight okay. avoid having late meals yeah. avoid having heavy meals okay. do not lie down or sleep immediately after having meal okay. you know walk for two to three hours or sleep after two to three hours yeah. after you had a meal mm -hmm. have a walk mm -hmm. have a light meal yeah. avoid there are certain kinds of food which are you know, which are known to cause hyper acidity, okay. like coffee, yeah. like spicy food, yeah. like smoking, yeah. alcohol. Yeah. So avoid those foods. Okay. So uh, uh, when we talk about, uh, say, you said when we talk about endoscopy. So endoscopy. When people hear about endoscopy, I'll tell there is a myth. अब एंडोस्कोपी किसी को बोल दिया इधर दिस पर्सन इज नॉट ट्रीटेबल अब तो मतलब ये लास्ट स्टेज है अब तो बस हो गया एंड इधर इट्स सो पेनफुल दैट वी डोंट वांट टू टेक इट सो हाउ डू वी लाइक इट इज चेंजिंग राशि यू सी व्हाट इज हैपनिंग नाउ इज दैट एंडोस्कोपी टुडे इज बिकम अ वेरी वेरी कॉमन टेस्ट फॉर गैस्ट्रोएंटरोलॉजिस्ट एंड इट इज यू नो इट इज डन विद लॉट ऑफ ईज इन द ओल्डन टाइम्स इट यूज्ड टू बी डन विदाउट एनेस्थीसिया ओके टुडे वी डू Uh, good proper endoscopy under anesthesia mm -hmm. short anesthesia that means it that anesthesia is lasting for 5 minutes mm -hmm. till the time we are doing endoscopy the moment we are out of the endoscopy you are also awake mm -hmm. so you do not actually uh, know or you do not feel any discomfort of endoscopy and endoscopy gives us a lot of information about the stomach mm -hmm. and the food pipe and then we can decide Whether we want to treat this person with medication okay. or we want to do a surgery. So how does endoscopy exactly like work? What is the process? so there is a pipe, okay. you know, a long pipe which we insert through the mouth, okay. through the mouth, hmm. and go through the pharynx and then go into the food pipe and go into the stomach. Okay. It has a camera inside. Okay. So while you are going in, hmm. you are able to visualize the food pipe, the stomach, the inner lining, hmm. and you take pictures. Hmm. Similarly, while you are coming back, you visualize and you take pictures. Okay. If you find any abnormal finding in the endoscopy, you can also take biopsies okay. for test. Okay. That's the idea of doing endoscopy. How does biopsy help uh, people in the problems uh, right. of gastrointestinal? So let's say that you did an endoscopy and in the stomach you find a small lesion. Okay. Now we do not know what this lesion is. Yeah. So we take the biopsy and send it for. Specialized test, which is called histopathological examination. Okay. That test will tell us the nature of the disease. Okay. Whether this is a tumor, whether it is an ulcer, okay. if it is a tumor, whether it is a cancerous tumor okay. or a non-cancerous tumor. Yeah. So your further treatment will be decided by the report of the biopsy. Okay. So as we talked about about the before we talked about ulcer. So uh, people, lot of people, like majority of people are suffering from ulcer these days. 
So how do we uh, like explain what exactly ulcer is? So ulcer, as I you know I was talking before, lot of it depends upon the eating habit. Okay. Lot of it depends upon the sensitivity of the stomach okay. of a particular person. Okay. And also stress. Mm -hmm. So mental stress is the biggest culprit. Yes. This to cause stress, yeah. acidity and yeah. to cause ulceration. Yes. So my request to everybody would be. Try to lead a happy life. Mm -hmm. If you have any kind of stress, try to forget about it. Try to deal with it, mm -hmm. rather than keeping it in the mind and hurting yourself. Yeah. And uh, meditation, yoga, talking to friends, talking to people who mm -hmm. who are your fr genuine friends. Mm -hmm. I think it helps. And yeah. uh, I would say that there is no point carrying stress in your mind yeah. because it's not only the mind; it is the body. And so everything gets injured by yeah, by right. stress. So uh, see, so doctor, you might have you know attended and you might have dealt with a lot of millions of patients. What age group or what gender have you you know like you have noticed or seen or treated that is age group me or is gender me? Most of the cases, you have come to me. Rashi, that will depend upon which sector of the society you are looking yeah, at. Yeah. and uh, geographical distribution but yeah. today what we see even the younger kids yeah even the school going students yeah. adults and people are having so much of stress and uh, abdominal issues that it is amazing okay. so i i would not like to pinpoint any particular age group i would say that it is rampant today in the mm -hmm. society among all sections of the society mm -hmm. among all age groups of the people mm -hmm. uh, i think it is our responsibility as citizens as a family member mm -hmm. to identify these people whether they are in elder age group or in younger age group to make sure that their stress is alleviated so when we talk about treatments so the treatments only oh, so there is is there any kind of a test which tells you aap bas jaise ki we talk about say sugar levels you have this sugar level test and there's like you are About to start it, you need to like work out and do things and control your sugar. Is there anything uh, test any test like that that tells you that now you are on a line? You need to control your diet. See, you know you go to. So there is no it. one test, okay. but yes, uh, one should definitely get regular health checks. Yes. And when when in a health check we do basic tests, mm -hmm. and you are looked after by a physician. Okay. And obviously, if any red flag is raised, mm. then we need to. pursue it further that time. but otherwise i would think there's no one particular test okay. to know that okay you do one test and you you, you know yeah. so i would say there is a battery of tests the routine health check is a very good investigation package mm -hmm. which one must do mm -hmm. to know their health status what uh, months span should be a full body check up should be done like what is the span i would think that you no know, once a year is a good idea okay and uh, it gives you a complete picture of your body yeah. how's your sugars how's your hemoglobin mm -hmm. how's your kidney functioning how is your liver functioning and they are very basic tests you know they are mostly blood tests yeah. x ray ecg yeah if you have any specific symptom then obviously we need to look into that yeah. in little more detail but normally i think a routine health check should be able to give you a good picture of your body so when we talk about uh, gastrointestinal disease what is the major body part or what is the major intestinal part which is getting affected the most when you somebody is suffering so i think stomach body. and the colon these are the two major okay. parts which gets uh, affected more commonly uh, bloating indigestion yes. ulcers yes. reflux constipation diarrhea these are the common complaints okay. blood in the stool or blood in the vomit there okay. and that becomes a red flag yeah. as what you were asking mm -hmm. that you know one particular symptom mm -hmm. so i think bleeding, bleeding in the stool or bleeding in the vomiting is something which i would it like to be a regular thing ki aapko agar vomiting ho rahi hai regularly usme blood aa raha hai ya once in a while no even suppose i vomit today and i it, it has blood huh. i would not ignore it i would go to a specialist and uh, and just get a test right. done yes. even uh, this is the same for stools also if same for the blood in the stools okay. because the the reasons for the blood in the stools can be very simple like piles but it can also be a cancer so how would one know without examining yeah you're right so it's so, important to be examined for any alarming symptoms mm -hmm. by a specialist don't ignore it yeah 
So, do we have different kind of uh, gastrointestinal diseases? Do we have like a, you know, either yes. stages, either types? Yeah. So, so if so, we can classify intestinal gastrointestinal diseases into broadly three, four parts. One is cancer. Okay. And that is where the stages will oh, come. Oh, really? Cancer? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's gastrointestinal okay. cancer. That's our specialty. Okay. So, gastrointestinal cancer is one of the common things which can happen. Mm -hmm. Then, infective diseases like diarrhea. Colitis, yes. all those kind of uh, problems. Then you can have stress-induced problems. Okay. That those are called functional problems, okay. like irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. Then you What's can that? Irritable bowel. Irritable bowel syndrome again is a you know you have a non-specific symptoms like bloating, constipation, uh, indigestion, okay. and there is no specific cause. Okay. Most of the people who suffer from irritable bowel syndrome mm -hmm. have uh, you know, very anxious mind, oh. very hypersensitive people. Okay. So it's connected through the mind, mm -hmm. and they are difficult to treat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so functional problems where there is no organic cause. So these are some of the problems which you can have in gastrointestinal tract. Mm -hmm. And you can have pancreatitis, that is infection of the pancreas. Mm -hmm. Stones in the gallbladder are one of the common problems. Oh, stone, yes. Yeah. Stone so is the very common very problem, common problem. These days with the people. So these are the three four. Okay, so uh, what are these like treatable, like treatable only with medicines or you have to just go to the So hospital? again, there is no one rule which will apply to all. A lot of these diseases can be treated by medication and obviously some specific diseases will require surgery like stones in the gallbladder will require surgical options. Cancer in the stomach, colon, rectum, pancreas will most of the times will require surgical intervention. So when we talk about say, you just said about colon diseases, what is exactly like how would you define a colon disease? Colon is large intestine. Okay. So we have two types of intestine, small intestine yes. and large intestine. Our large intestine, any problem having in the large intestine is called colonic diseases. Okay. They can be again due to infection, due to functional disorders, due to cancer, due to blockage, again because of inflammation. Mm -hmm. So that is how we will divide colonic diseases. Is colonic disease or uh, like colon disease is more in numbers or uh, we go through other stages that, like you said? I think they are very common diseases all okay. of them. Yeah. So they like distribute yeah. equally, equally people, almost, depending on yeah. the... Okay, so when we talk about uh, gastrointestinal disease, um, is it like uh, something which is to be taken seriously on a point where uh, see, I am a normal person, I will have indigestion some day or other. So, uh, how, what is the long, longest span or what is the commonest span? I should be like, I have indigestion on a regular basis. Pe ho hai. Chodi -chodi ho hai. I should go to a doctor or it should be like, a, ki, balab, ek baar hua hai, do baar hua hai, I should just seek a doctor. So, I think any symptom which is persisting for more than a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. in spite of taking adequate precaution, yeah. then I think you should see a specialist. Mm -hmm. So as you said, if you are having indigestion mm. and you are eating healthy, mm. but your indigestion still continues, then you should go and see a specialist. If your indigestion is also associated with other symptoms like say vomiting, mm. right, or constipation, or loose stools, mm. or you are losing weight, yes. or there is a blood in the vomiting, mm. then obviously you need to go earlier than rather than late. So when we talk about gastrointestinal disease which uh, we said uh, before that it might be affecting a uh, person, anxiety, depression. How does one get affected by it mentally? Like, you know? So as we know that, you know, brain controls our whole body. Yeah. We know that, right? Yes. Whenever there is a stress, mm -hmm. it triggers a mechanism mm -hmm. uh, that the control of the brain on the other organs gets affected. Yes, you're right. Right. So when it gets affected, your that particular organ will show symptoms. Mm -hmm. So in the case of abdomen, mm -hmm. when we say gastrointestinal tract, there is a direct communication and we call it a brain gut syndrome. Brain gut, gut syndrome. Okay. That means whenever your brain is hyperactive mm -hmm. or you are suffering from any brain uh, mental issues like stress, depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. your gut also reacts in the same way. Yeah. So you can have a hyperactive gut, that mm -hmm. means you need to go to a uh, toilet more frequently, yeah. you have a colicky pain, you feel bloated, you mm -hmm. feel that there is an indigestion. Mm -hmm. So all this is related to 
brain and that is what we call it irritable bowel syndrome that's one one type of that disease so i think controlling your mind and treating your mind remaining stress free uh, is very very important for a healthy abdomen healthy intestines there is no doubt and there is no debate about it so when we talk about the lifestyle people should carry uh, people want to carry a healthy lifestyle to avoid such problems uh, say anxiety depression colon ulcer uh, gastrointestinal any disease what would you suggest to the audience that what kind of a lifestyle and eating habit should they adapt on a daily basis i would say to start with that a healthy lifestyle healthy lifestyle means what i mean the spectrum is very big mm -hmm. for somebody this is lifestyle would be healthy for this somebody this lifestyle yeah. but i think in moderation everything is allowed mm -hmm. what i would say that some form of physical activity on a daily basis mm -hmm. whether it is jogging whether it is a brisk walking whether it is going to gym mm -hmm. whether playing a sport mm -hmm. dancing whatever you want whatever is of your interest one should definitely include a good physical routine in their lifestyle mm -hmm. that's number one yeah. number two healthy eating healthy eating means there is a there should be a good combination of carbohydrates proteins and fat yeah you can't have a zero fat diet because yeah, yeah, yeah. fat is also important yeah. for body yeah. similarly proteins carbohydrate yeah. so you can't have very excessive protein yeah. like you know some of the youngsters today uh, there is a fashion of having lot of proteins proteins protein, protein shakes powders protein and, protein, and all yeah. those things yeah. and you know pumping steroids yeah. that's not healthy at all yeah. so we must have a right mixture of all these three which i have said and have a physical activity mm -hmm. Avoid eating junk food on a daily basis. I'm not saying don't have burger pizza at all. Yeah. I'm saying don't have it every day. Yeah. Right. You need to fix up a time that you know. Okay, I will have a pizza mm -hmm. once in a week or a fast food once in a week. Yeah. And you know, good home cooked food is the best food. There's no question about it. Yeah. So when we uh, talk about this thing, uh, that lifestyle should be maintained. Uh, I would love to know what was your one of the cases you would remind till date that this is the most interesting or the difficulties you would have you know like done till date in so that's a very difficult question because every day we uh, we know we deal with challenging cases yeah yeah but i can remember you know of and very interesting cases that a uh, couple of years back mm -hmm. maybe 4 or 5 years back yeah. there was a young boy who came to us and he had participated in one of the eating competitions oh my god which so was helping the competition yeah you yeah. know okay. one of the restaurants was promoting their brand mm -hmm. and they had started a eating competition that jo bhi sabse zyada burger mirchi wala burger khayega oh, okay. usko you know uh, he will get a prize or coupon something like that mm -hmm. and this fellow ate ate lot lot of burgers with yes. lot of mirchi mm -hmm. and you know his stomach perforated there was a ho the ulcer perforated and he came with the peritonitis where we had to do an operation in the middle of the night thank god he was saved uh, but that is i think very interesting and uh, that's well, actually, actually very sad uh, that you know yeah. how <coughs> some people advertise or uh, do these competitions which are unhealthy without even like no, talk, they don't uh, they are not even uh, even the yeah. boy is not aware Absolutely. the rest of people are not aware that this might end up for a young child it's just a you know fun that you know yeah. you want to eat more and win a competition yeah so uh, these kind of problems after you have done the surgery to the boy or normal anybody uh, do they lead to a normal lifestyle by eating yes if if they are treated in time and if the disease process has not caused any permanent damage mm -hmm. they will lead a normal life okay. there is no question so they can eat normal amount of spices yeah, yeah, yeah. without medication or without medication. medication medication will continue for some time okay till the healing is complete yeah. but after that they can lead a normal lifestyle thank you so much doctor thank you very much for the great interview thank you to aware people about things which they don't know exist and which are important so if you guys have any kind of problems any kind of symptoms what we talked to doctor about please seek a doctor have a whole body test once in a while so that you know you picturize your own body thank you so much have a great day